I remember the first day at the fruit fly lab,、uh, I thought that the smell was really, really bad. Scientists started using model organisms、uh, in research hundreds of years ago.、Uh, you've heard of the expression being a guinea pig, right? And that was because guinea pigs were initially used in labs to study deficiencies in vitamin C. And some researchers even believe that the ancient Greeks used animals in performing experiments and doing research. So, this idea of model organisms is not a new one. It has been around for hundreds of years and it has tremendously helped scientists in understanding biology. If you're studying biology, There's a, there's a big chance you're going to use model organisms、uh, when you go to work in a lab or to do research. Whenever we have a hypothesis in biology, most of the time we need to test it in a living organism. So that could be fruit flies, that could be fish, that could be plants. Any living organism can serve as a model organism. And while these animals or plants, etc., are complex, they're a little bit more simple than、uh, human biology. We are talking about specific species that have been at some point introduced into the lab, and most of the time their genome has been sequenced, and scientists h a s been really studying、uh, these organisms. Technically, every organism can be a model organism, but what makes a good model organism, most of the time, it is the ease of studying that model organism in the lab. And a good model organism is subjective to your own research and to your own question. So, a good model organism for you. Would be one that would allow you to answer your specific scientific question. Again, if we go back to the example of, of fruit flies, we can easily raise them in the lab. We can grow them by millions. They have few chromosomes with much fewer genes than the human genome. So it's really easy to understand the interaction between these genes. Some other researchers would be studying、um, neurogenesis, for example. And to study neurogenesis, scientists like to use C. elegans, the worm C. elegans, as a model organism. The advantage of a C. elegans worm is that it's transparent and it has. Very few neurons, so scientists can actually look at a worm under the microscope and track a single neuron. So that makes it a good model organism for that particular question. You choose a particular model organism to answer a specific question, and then sometimes you have to choose another model organism, more complex or even sometimes more simple, to answer additional questions that are based on your research. But model organisms, like everything else in life, have some limitations. For example, when you're studying, when you're doing your research in mice, mice are expensive, so you cannot really do what I was doing and dissecting hundreds of brains.、Uh, mice have a gestation time that is a little bit longer than fruit flies or C. elegans, for example. Like a fruit fly, lifespan is only 50 days, right? Whereas a mouse h a v e a lifespan is about, of about three years. So you can imagine that if you're studying aging, You would want to study it in a fruit fly because it has a shorter lifespan. But now, if you wanted to answer a more complex question, well, you have to go the three years, and now you have to use a mouse to、uh, do your research. Another major limitation of model organisms is for scientists to understand that findings in model organisms do not necessarily always translate to human diseases or to human biology. Uh, you take a lot of the research that has been done recently on developing vaccines against Alzheimer's that work very well in, in mice, but that do not give the same effect in humans and do not work for that, particular,、uh, for that particular case. Yes, there is an ethical question around using model organisms in biological research. The ethical problem with,、uh, with using animals in medical research is really to making sure that. You know, we're using them sparsely and we're making sure that we're only using animals when it is essential, that we are using lower model organisms when possible to answer certain questions rather than, you know, like sacrificing mice. And you could even imagine, you know, like even higher model organisms like monkeys or apes. And when you're studying mice, for example, you have to write specific protocols that get approved by ethical committees to make sure that your use of animals in this particular case is justified. It is not only about sacrificing the animal, it's how you use your animal in your research. So, for example, when you're working with mice, you cannot put 
more than a certain number of mice in a particular cage. When you're doing experiments, you have to do your best to limit their suffering. You have to anesthetize them. Model organisms have been crucial in helping us understand biology like we understand it today. And uh, it is important to acknowledge that while the ethical questions about sacrificing animals is extremely relevant, and uh, while some research, some biological research can be done without using animal models, for example, in cells, uh, scientists, the advantage that model organisms bring is that complexity and the interaction between systems, for example, or uh, the interaction between different cells. Uh, I was studying Alzheimer's and the fruit fly and that was a great model organism because I was expressing my human gene that caused the, the fly to develop symptoms similar to Alzheimer's, and that was in the nervous system, but I was studying the interaction of immune cells with these nervous system cells, right? So could I have studied this question and this problem in cell cultures? Probably, but it, cell culture would never be able to replicate the complexity and that a whole uh, organism can bring. So model organisms give you, at the same time, a simplified version of, let's say, human biology, but also a model or a system that is complex enough where you could study the interactions between different genes or between different proteins or between RNA and proteins. It is the platform that we use to really confirm and our hypotheses and study them and get data to move them forward and ask more questions.